Hello and welcome back to edupediaworld.com. In this session, we'll be continuing with oligopoly type of market structure and we will be discussing our last model of price and output determination under oligopoly that is collusion model, the cartel. We already have discussed that what is a collusion. Now we'll be focusing that how price and output is determined under this type of model. See, collusion model is also based on the fact that firms under oligopoly compete with each other not on the basis of price factors but non-price factors and those non-price factors can be better customer service, discounts on upgrades, free deliveries and installation, extended warranties, credit facilities, longer opening hours, product branding, after sales services, so these etc. These can be the non-price factors and basically we get to see this practically under oligopoly type of market structure that is where there are few sellers. These few sellers don't want to acquire more of market share by cutting down their prices because it will also minimize their profits. Basically they acquire more market share by having the same prices. You will get to see that almost all the sellers under oligopoly have the same prices. They acquire the market share on the basis of good brand ambassadors for them, good advertisement, good branding, product differentiation, attractive packaging. They differentiate on these bases in order to get more market share. And as we know that there are few sellers in the market. So they can either compete with each other or they can coordinate with each other. If they compete with each other, then we say that the firms under oligopoly are behaving like the firms under perfect competition. But if they coordinate with each other, we say that the firms under oligopoly are behaving like the firms under monopoly. So suppose if they decide to coordinate, suppose there are just few sellers and if they decide to coordinate and restrict the quantity in order to raise the prices to maximize their profits. So as a result, they are getting into a monopoly type of situation. Because coordinating with each other and that too secretly is illegal across many countries. So if it's an illegal agreement and it's secretly done, we call it as a collusion. And if it is a formal agreement to collude, we call it as a cartel. We have already discussed that what is a collusion and what is a cartel when we were discussing about price leadership model. So I'm just revising upon that thing. So suppose we take the example of OPEC. OPEC is a cartel because it is a very legal agreement between all the firms who have decided to collude. We have discussed about OPEC. OPEC is the organization of petroleum exporting countries and there are 12 countries involved in this cartel. They control around 79% of oil reserves. This data is of 2012. 79% of oil reserves and they produce 44% of the total production of oil done worldwide. So we see here that they are trying to capture major portion of the market and why do uh, why they are doing so and in fact it is considered formal also because it's not about just one country it is 12 countries are involved in that and this is worldwide known that these people are agreeing upon the prices and the quantity to be produced in order to cut down the competition and in order to maximize their profits. They can fix up the prices of oil barrels according to their whims and fancies. So this is a cartel. That is a formal agreement between firms under oligopoly. So now we'll see that how firms decide upon their price and output decisions under cartel and this happens in collusion also. Let's see how do they do that. 
Let's start with a very simple case that there are just two firms A and B under oligopoly type of market structure and they have decided to form a cartel or a collusion. I suppose that you now know the difference between what is a collusion and a cartel. One is a formal agreement and the other is an informal agreement. I will show this that how do they determine their price and output with the help of a graph. Now you can see here that I have drawn three graphs and the first one is for firm A. The second one is for firm B and the third one shows the whole industry graph. On x-axis of each graph, I am taking output and on y-axis the prices. See, all the firms have their own marginal cost and average cost curves. Suppose this is the marginal cost and average cost curve of firm A. We name it as MC1 and AC1. And this is the marginal cost and average cost curve of firm B. We name it as MC2 and AC2. Now, we'll see in the industry graph that we will be summating the cost curves of firm A and firm B. And uh, we also have the demand curve for the product of this particular industry, which is sloping downwards. This is the average revenue curve, which is equal to the demand curve. And as a result of this negative sloping demand curve, we get a marginal revenue curve, which is sloping at a very faster pace. So this is the marginal revenue curve. Now the marginal cost curve, which we'll be getting is the summation of the marginal cost curves of firm A and firm B. And suppose it's like this. This is the industry marginal cost curve. Now, where the marginal cost curve has cut down the marginal revenue curve, there the profit maximizing quantity has been determined because at this particular point, MR is equals to MC. So this is the profit maximizing output, OQ. And if we extend this particular line to the average revenue curve, we get the prices to be charged. So OQ is the profit maximizing quantity and OP is the prices to be charged by each firm. Now how do we get that out of OQ what quantity firm B will be producing and what quantity firm A will be producing. So for that suppose if we name this point as C, I will extend this line C to all the firms that is, I'll draw a line which will be parallel to the x-axis and which will be cutting down the MC1 and MC2 curves. So see, It has cut down the MC2 curve at this particular point. So it shows that at this particular point, the marginal revenue is equals to marginal cost. And so this is the profit maximizing quantity to be produced by firm B. So let's name it as Q2. And at this particular point, this is the profit maximizing quantity to be produced by firm A. Let's name it as Q1. So the total quantity which the industry is providing to the market that is OQ is equal to OQ1 plus OQ2. So now how to determine that what prices like how much profit each firm is making. So for that we will be extending suppose we name at um, this point as D and we will be extending a line which will be again parallel to the x-axis to both the graphs. 
to determine the prices. So these are the prices to be charged that is all the firms will be charging a price which is equal to OP only and the profit which they are making will be the difference between the average cost and the price that is price minus average cost into the number of quantity produced will be the revenue for each firm. So what we do is we extend this line to this particular the line which is parallel to the x-axis and we can get the difference between the average cost and the price. This is the difference for firm A. This particular amount is the profit for firm A and this particular amount is the profit for firm B. So I suppose now you get that. See the prices which each firm is charging. See they have entered into a cartel that is they have agreed upon what quantity to be produced and what prices to charge. So the prices which they are charging right now is giving them the maximum profit. So and in fact if they decide in order to increase the or decrease the price or increase or decrease the quantity that is if it wants to go against the cartel then it won't be making profits which is more than this particular level that is the profit which they are making under a cartel it is beneficial for both the firms now because they are earning maximum profit so there is no motivation for the firm to change their price and output decision so this shows the stability of price and output in collusive oligopoly. I suppose that you you know that how do we determine the profit for each firm. The profit will be equal to the price minus the average cost and whatever will be this amount it will be multiplied by the quantity that is the units produced by each firm. So we get that this amount of profit is for firm A and this amount of profit is for firm D. So this is how we determine, sorry, firm B. So this is how we determine the price and output under a cartel or collusion type of agreement. And this is the maximum profit which the firm can make. Now because they are acting as a monopoly, so there is no fear of competition and there is no fear of other firm going against the cartel because they know that the other firm if it goes against the cartel it is going to lose the market share and in fact its profit will go down. So now I suppose that you have got the concept that how price and output is determined under each model of oligopoly. Summarizing upon we can say that under oligopoly type of market structure there are a small number of firms or rather say sellers then they sell either identical that is homogeneous or differentiated products then entry is very difficult in this market due to significant barriers to entry then where MR is equals to MC that is marginal revenue is equals to marginal cost as like other type of market structure this is the profit maximizing output then in the short run the firms under oligopoly type of market structure can either have average revenue to average is equal to average cost that is normal profit situation 
then average revenue is greater than average cost that is super normal profit situation and average revenue is less than average cost that is loss so in short run the firm can enter all these three phase so what about long run under long run the firm can have either two situations that is average revenue is equals to average cost or average revenue is greater than average cost because there are significant barriers to the entry of firms under long run so there can be just two situations next what is the price like price will be always higher than the price which is charged under perfect competition it will also be higher than the price which is charged under monopolistic competition but lower than the prices which are being charged under monopoly so here we get to see the oligopoly type of prices and quantity again under oligopoly we see get to see more quantity than perfect con competition same more quantity than monopolistic competition and but less quantity as compared to monopoly this is oligopoly so now i suppose that you understand the different types of market structure and how prices are being determined under different types of market structure in the next session we'll be starting with macro economic concepts till then have a nice time and thank you for watching edupedia world